Gentlemen, we're going to start our February, uh, what is this? February the 15th meeting. We're going to have the uh, invocation by the mayor, and then we'll have Pledge of Allegiance by our city attorney, Scott Cookson. Please stand, and then we'll have the roll call. Our blessed Father, we come to you tonight to ask you to watch over us as we go about our city business. Watch over us as we talk about things that pertain to our city and that we move along in the right direction. We ask you for your guidance. We ask you to be overlooking our first responders as they go about their daily business and through the times and trials that we have with COVID. We ask in your heavenly name, amen. Amen. Commissioner Brenson? Here. Commissioner Wilson? Here. Mayor Johnson? Here. Commissioner Firstner? Here. And Commissioner Oliver is absent. All right. Healthy West Orange Trails Connection and Presentation by Emily Hanna, Executive Director with Bike Walk Central Florida. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Emily Hanna, as you indicated. I am the Executive Director of Bike Walk Central Florida. I've never had to lift this up before. Um, and I am here today to present to you the Healthy West Orange Trails connection and what that entails. But before I get started, I wanted to tell you why we're here with the connection. And the Healthy West Orange uh, Chamber, I'm sorry, the West Orange Healthcare District in 2020 identified trails and the activation of trails as a goal for them uh, to try to achieve some healthcare goals within the West Orange County District. Um, and so, we, uh, they convened a group of stakeholders, including the partner municipalities and other supporting agencies, uh, to discuss what this trails connection, what this group and these activation of trails might look like. Um, and in doing that, in doing so in that process, actually your development services department here at the city of Ocoee led that effort for that year and a half with the health district uh, to get all of the partner agencies, all the municipalities kind of on the same page talking about trails and the health in our community. So kudos to Ginger and her team at Development Services for doing that. Um, so after we formed this connection, we created this initiative, we wanted to have a mission. Um, and that mission was to bring together those partners in the shared goal of promoting, activating, and enhancing the trail system, not only the West Orange Trail, but the other trails in uh, the um, West Orange County, and essentially create opportunities for physical activity, social engagement, prosperity, and happiness, something that we saw kind of come out of the pandemic as people sought for parks and trails and recreation for their outdoor spaces. And so those partners that convened and can hopefully continue to convene today are our partner agencies, those are our voting members, and that includes those municipalities in West Orange County, um, along with GOTHA, which is the Rural Settlement, uh, the Foundation for a Healthier West Orange, which is providing the funding for this, and then the West Orange Healthcare District, which is providing the overall administration and framework. Um, our supporting agencies are those other communities that um, are not necessarily within that district, and then other uh, supporting partners, including FDOT, the Friends of Lake Apopka, and Bike Walk Central Florida. And why I'm here today is to ask you in a resolution, which is in your consent agenda, I believe item number three, uh, to approve a resolution to mark your participation in this coalition uh, or in the Trails Connection. And this partnership does one of many things. One, it allows for your voice to be heard in a group of stakeholders to how to engage and activate that trail system, but it also allows you to leverage the existing resources that are available, not only at the state and at the county, but also also among your municipal partners as well and leveraging those resources to build a more connected healthier West Orange County which hopefully will then in turn be one of the healthiest places to live in the nation and I'd love to come back to you and tell you that we've achieved that uh, so on your desk um, today is a printout of that initiative uh, that um, Ms. Ginger and your development services department took on to help the West Orange uh, Healthcare District and those stakeholders identify 
identify those goals and those programs in which we hope to continue moving forward with your participation. Uh, so with that, I thank you for allowing me to be here today to present this to you and ask you that you um, adopt and accept that resolution in your consent agenda. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you have any comments? Why don't you set a deadline? <laughs> <laughs> okay. We need to go ahead and that'll, that'll be in the consent book. Yes. All right. Staff report. I have nothing this evening, Mayor. All right, consent agenda. No, public comments. Public, I'm sorry, public comments, and I got one. That's why I was thinking consent agenda. It's about item number seven. seven. Let's talk about it real quick before we vote. Approval of change order number one for central, I mean for contract, ITB with CFE, West Oakland Avenue and North Cumberland Avenue reconstruction phase one and Lakewood Avenue and East Oakland Avenue reconstruction. Public Works, not here, I guess. Um, hmm? Okay. Okay. Good evening, Mayor and City Commissioners. My name is Sue Laurie. Uh, I'm an Ocoee resident, and I'm also the rental coordinator for the Women's Club. We are very excited about the improvements to the streets around the Women's Club. Uh, not very excited about an additional 153 more days of construction. But um, that being said, uh, with the plans to dig down an additional three feet, are we still going to have access every day to our parking lot and our driveway? And also, um, is there plans to widen the street uh, before the construction, it was very difficult for two cars to pass on that section of uh, Lakewood, especially if one vehicle was a trash truck or someone towing a boat. Um, with the addition of parking spaces, which we're also very excited about, uh, we were wondering, are they going to be parallel or diagonal, and where are they going to be placed? Uh, the other thing I would like to say, we're very happy that the city up to this point has been very considerate in making sure that we have had access to our parking lot and our driveway, and we hope that that will continue. So those are my questions. Thank you very much. Just stay up there just a minute. Anybody have any questions? I've got some. So we'll go next. <coughs> not for not for me. Okay. Right? All right, I'd like Craig and is it Steve, I mean, uh, Richard. <laughs> Richard. Richard, sorry. <laughs> First words I heard out of her was 150 days. Who give her that? Thank you. Uh, well, that's Good something evening, for everybody. two weeks. Two weeks I called and got the message it's going to be done by the end of March. We're now, fellas, that's more than 100. That's it's less than 150. More than 100. Today. Yeah, it's gonna, yeah, it's probably not going to be at the end of March because we had a delay. We got a we got a concert, a huge thing that has right. been set, that has got to be open at that end. Yes, correct. That road. The the push is to take care of that situation for the the women's club, and then be ready for Lake for uh, Oakland, East Oakland, to be ready and open for the concert. When? At the end of March. That is the schedule for that part of the project. It might extend down Lakewood still and still be, uh, uh, work still has to be done on that Lakewood leg, okay, in front of the, the, the women's club, but the push is to get East Oakland finished. Well, as I ride by every day and I ride around all day long, there is mm -hmm. nobody there. I don't care if they're just picking up the Right. rocks in the place but there's nobody there working yeah they had to, they had to get off and now they're remobilized and they're dewatering and they're starting to work right well now. march the 30th yeah is, it's gonna be a push somebody better have a shovel working right right we so understand. you're telling me that part's gonna be open up yes. on oakland that's 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 the, that's correct we're trying to push them real hard for that now to answer some of the questions access into the parking area and, and and uh, into that area that uh, the women's club is probably going to have to come off of uh, 
McKee, yeah. if mm -hmm. necessary. That's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, the road will be wider, so slightly wider. Uh, I believe it was 17 feet wide. Now it's 24 feet wide, so 12 and 12. Okay. What about the parking lot space on the uh, north side of the Woman's Club? Uh, not we, sure if it's impacted. Where Oakland runs, but you know, it used to come right down by the north side of the Woman's Club, the parking space there. That, I think, is kind of being... You got the trailers and the all. trailers, there. yeah, the city so hall. None of that's so going to be gone either. I doubt that's it. That's why we got to have that thing done. Correct, yes. And now, go ahead. Can you ask for her about the way the parking spaces are going to be? Yeah, there will be parking on uh, Lakewood mm -hmm. and also uh, East Oakland. Okay, on both, but then you'll have also have your parking inside here. Okay. Is is it parallel or uh, diagonal? It, I believe it's sort of like a diagonal parking setup. Oh, that's good. Okay, so you, it's not parallel. No. Okay, we're so very excited about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, anything okay. else? Laura? No, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. Richard, I appreciate it. I had a little brain mess there. No, no. All right, so now we can go back. We need a, any comments on the uh, agenda, co consent agenda beside that. I need a motion. I'll make that motion to approve. Motion made by Commissioner Wilson. Do I hear a second? I'll second. second. It. Mm. Take your pick. <laughs> second by Commissioner <laughs> Brimson. All right, no more comments. Let's vote. Motion carries you now with Commissioner Oliver absent. Okay, first reading ordinances, none. Second reading of ordinances, public hearing. We have a second reading of ordinance for property rights element. Comprehensive plan text amendment to create new element project. Uh, zoning manager Whitfield. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, commissioners. Um, This item is a comprehensive plan text amendment to our to the city's adopted comprehensive plan. It's based on House Bill uh, 59 that was uh, enacted by the legislation last year. So the commission had this item as the first reading public hearing back on October 5th. Um, that comp plan amendment has been transmitted to the, the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity and other review agencies in accordance with statutes. During that time, we haven't received any objections um, or comments. And so this is the second public hearing that is required per statutes. Um, if the city commission adopts it, the amendment will become effective uh, within 31 days. This is background on the amendment. Again, July 1st, 2021 was when the House bill was adopted by the legislation. Uh, essentially, without going through all of this again, it ensures that each local government adopts an element in its comprehensive plan that protects the property rights of property owners in our jurisdiction. Um, based on the direction from the City Commission on October 5th, we used the statements of rights language directly from Florida statutes and definitions directly from Florida statutes. Um, it's depicted in the ordinance. Um, this is a, a quick summary. Um, We've gone through this at the last hearing, but essentially it is to protect and preserve the rights of private property owners. Um, and with that, staff is recommending that the commission adopt ordinance number 2021-05, which creates a new public, private property rights element in the comp plan. Thank you. All right. Yes, I do. So this is the title to the ordinance. This is an ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida amending the City of Ocoee Comprehensive Plan as adopted in 1991 as amended to create new property rights element in order to enact new goals, objectives, and policies to comply with House Bill 59, which was signed into law on June 29, 2021, and became effective July 1, 2021, providing for transmittal, authorizing the revision of the City Comprehensive Plan, providing for severability, providing for an effective Okay, we're going to open the public. Anybody in the public have any comments on this issue? Item number 12, Ordinance for Property Rights Element. All right, we're going to close it, bring it back to the dice. Any comments from the commissioners? If not, I need a motion. I'll make that motion to approve. Motion made uh, approval by Commissioner Wilson. Do I hear a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Firstner. 
Any more comments? No more comments. Let's vote. Motion carries unanimously with Oliver, Commissioner Oliver absent. Public here number 13, authorization to proceed with contract for sale from Wire Development LLC for city-owned property identified as tracks 6C, 6D, 6C, and 6F, and track 33 on the Oakway Crown Point PUD located in Oakway Apopka Road and Crown Point Parkway. Thank you, Mayor. Mike Rimmer, Development Services Director. The item before you is to authorize the to signing the contract with wire development back in September of 2021 the Commission uh, accepted a letter of intent for the purchase of these tracks and directed staff to work with wire development to get to a contract on the sale of the uh, properties that are located within the Crown Point project these are tracks that were had a village center designation uh, just on the north side of a high school and uh, again, this is a master plan community that we did end up partnering with Orange County Public Schools. And that partnership is continuing. Both myself and Wire Development have been working with Orange County on this the segment that I'm highlighting with the cursor. That's where the uh, West Orange Tech College is going. And with that site plan, we're working closely with Orange County Public Schools to with not only wire development in the city to look at the how those properties are going to be working adjacent to each other but we're also working with Orange County trails on this there's a trail element along the West Orange Trail and um, and this contract facilitates the letter of intent due to the threshold of the sale of land it's a public hearing and I'm just glad to be able to tell you that with this contract a lot of most of the time we have developers or people come to us with an idea and, and then they place it on our shoulders to figure out how to get it done it's nice to have a developer that develops mixed-use urban and is able to help us tell us what needs to be done and it's it's, it's a nice um, partnership so this contract has time and, and some inspection period and we've got some milestones to make to bring it to a closing and we look forward to working with them thank you All right, we'll open the public hearing here. Anybody in the public have any comments on item 13, <coughs> authorization to proceed with some contract for sale from wire development property up on Oakway Popka Road? Anybody from the company here? Nope. They are in attendance. But okay. All right, we'll close the public, bring it up to the dais. Anybody, any comments? If not, I need a motion. I, I have a couple of okay. questions. All right. Um, <coughs> Mr. Rumor, I, I, I know we've communicated on this matter already. Uh, I definitely wanted to make sure that I brought it to the attention of the public, letting them know that we were vigilant and uh, in discussing this matter. And that is specifically track, uh, I think it's track D. Of this, because I, based on what I've read, track D was not included initially. Yes, back in 2000, in, between 2018 and 2020, we entertained our, an RFP from developers to develop uh, everything north of the West Orange Trail. So it did not include this, include this track. And we received uh, responses several for townhome development. And this, it's, the PUD envisioned a village center, live work opportunities, student housing opportunities, retail opportunities which is being in the contract today. But back then, uh, minus that two acres, we had a, uh, the highest offer was $2 million. And it's also part of the, that RFP as staff and the city manager, we looked at those responses, looked at the, the housing, and then also looked, what does that do for the plan unit development? What does that do for the city in the future? And we thought it was prudent to, we didn't accept any of those offers. Today, adding the two acres, we have a $3 million sale price. Uh, the benefits for the retail and the development will be a higher um, property tax than just being the townhome. So we're very happy of the decision we made. Looks like it's going to pan out a lot better for the city in the long run. Thank you. Okay, so basically what you're saying is this is more beneficial for, to the city 
going at this route as opposed to just the town the road. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. All right. Anybody else? If not, I need a motion. I'll make a motion for approval for item 13. All right. Uh, Commissioner Branson made the motion for item number 13 for the authorization to proceed with a contract for sale. Uh, here's second. I'll second that. Second of a Commissioner Wilson. No more comments. Let's vote. Motion carries unanimously with Commissioner Oliver absent. All right. That's um, regular agenda and nothing. Comments from the citizens. I got a few here. We'll start off with um, Ar Irene Welch. Come on down. You fell out of form. I did. Are you with them? She just did. Well, go ahead. You, I, I've got your name, so that's what oh, I got. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can't get away from this. <laughs> yeah. um, I live on the corner of Adair and Worse, and the traffic there is horrendous. Um, the problem is they're allowed to park in the easement in front of their houses and we live right on the corner. And the people trying to get off a dare at busy times cannot see past the trucks. And a lot of times the traffic will not stop for children <coughs> since Ashley's uh, son got hit. They, they're starting to, but they haven't been. Many times my husband has gone out and, you know, they're not stopping for a child trying to cross, cross a dare. And he's had to stop the traffic just to get them to stop. There's no crosswalk there. With there is no crosswalk. No. Okay, we can, we can fix What I'd that. like you to look at we is can a three-way stop. Yes, ma'am. Three way stop. A three way know. stop. They they were speeding on worse just Sunday. Yeah, I know that. But I'll go ahead, finish up. And I'm gonna, they were you. speeding on uh on on worse on Sunday. People can't get out because they won't let them out. And then they decide, oh gee, I don't want to wait. So they go through our yard. I now have a crack uh what what is that thing? Drain pipe. Drain pipe because of it mm -hmm. there I, I've just never seen anything like it as a matter of fact after the media left and mr. Brinson left a man came up and uh, says I can't even let my children out to play there was three parents that have told us the same thing because they keep racing through the I I, I, I don't see where you know, okay, so if they're not going to stop for a stop sign, are they going to stop for a pedestrian? We would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> we would hope so. I wouldn't it. count on it. Yeah. Well, I would, are you through? Yes. I want, to, I want to ask, one of the things, I go there every day too, uh, I go up there and go around and go through there because the, one of the problems we've got now is there is where they're cutting through because they're not able to go up Clear Corner Road. Yes, ma'am. They're, they're not, they're coming, I'm one of them, because the only way to get over to Clear Corner Road is come up Worst Road, turn left on A there, and go out. And I go there and watch them on Sunday sometimes, up on the vault at the uh, Senior League field where I can park there, because they're coming off from Clear Corner Road, coming down Clear Corner Road, and that's where all the traffic and it's still a busy road anyway because of the problem is that's a, that's a good thoroughfare. goes to the parks and everything else. But one of the problems we've got now is all the cars are coming home in the afternoon and the mornings and coming up Adair Street off that, off that section of the road. The other, the, um, and with the uh, crossing for a pedestrian, we can, the city can put up a, uh, we can ask for and put in for a, a crossing signal there. For going across the road. Okay, so even if you put a crossing crosswalk there, yes, ma'am, 
Is that going to stop when, them from speeding down worse? How are they going to stop for a child if they won't stop for a stop sign? I, I agree with you. I don't know what's happened to people, but I will tell you, and I've sat up here for three months telling them about putting, going up and writing tickets on Worst Road. And they're writing tickets up there now because they're a yeah. speeder. They don't slow down. But it Everybody took thinks Ashley it's a racetrack. It took Ashley's son to get hit. Yeah, I know. Well, we've got citizens that have to pay attention also. We cannot get them to understand the speed limit on that road. So one of the things we've got to They're do racing. is figure it out. Sunday they were racing, I, and my neighbors I, were going, Oh, well, yeah. I, I, believe, I believe you. I've seen it. I believe you. So I'm going to just, is Patty Leroy, is that? You ready? Yeah. We'll, we'll address it some more in just a minute. Let's finish. Okay. She's talking about speeders also. So we'll, we'll address it in just a minute, okay? Huh? Is Chief here tonight? I don't see her. 42 year resident of Ocoee. Yep. If you want to get from Orlando to Claremont, you go on 50 Silver Star, Clarecona, Ocoee. If you're driving on Worst, Hackney Prairie, or Adair, you're a local, you're a resident. You know better. We hear talk of speed bumps and speed tables. That's not gonna work. Speed tables are a ride. Speed bumps, you come up on it, slam on the brakes, you cause an accident. We need tickets. You, you write a ticket for one car, you slow four other ones down. You write a ticket on the other end, you slow another four down. Maybe you'll get somebody who doesn't have a driver's license, doesn't have insurance. We need to do what Windermere did, it worked. Any of you who have gotten behind one of us who's gotten a ticket to Windermere, we go 25 miles an hour, we stop, we get out, we look both ways, and then we drive through a stop sign. That's what we need to do. We need to slow down the locals in Ocoee. That's what I was saying. I mean, that, it's a shame because you can go up, up by the school at Spring Lake Elementary, and it's like a racetrack. It is. And we've had them writing tickets. I was there the other day, and they pulled a guy over. But I mean, it's like, it doesn't seem to click for them up there in that area. It's not, it has and the to crossing be guards can be out there, and I swear they'll come by the crossing guard doing 40. But we've got to have the police put more, more time up there. And I also would ask that during this road closure, it's going to be another few months, but somebody up there in the afternoon or in the morning when the traffic pattern is on Adair and, and Worst Road, put somebody there to help with that traffic problem we got there. Because I can tell you, they're all coming up that road yes. and cutting across. Exactly. Yeah, and you're right. It, most of us know where the areas you go to cut through and get out it, and get around. It's all local, and but everybody. We, 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 as in one of our towns, is the youth organs. Youth is we are one of our big things, but youth and seniors to me is a, is the thing we got to watch for. And it, it's uh, Adair Street is where the seniors' place is at too. But exactly. It's it's a madhouse with that road closed down because everybody's trying to get around to go back over to Clearwater Road without trying to find it going down Fuller's Crossroad and cutting across that way. I was visiting so that we'll, 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 we'll put, I thought the police chief, you said she, she's not Yeah, Mayor, here. she's here. And just to, to add on to some of that, we, we have collected some of the speed data up there and the traffic counts, and uh, we have had public works up there to do a physical review of the roadway, and we are looking at crosswalks and maybe some things we can do to slow traffic down a little. But I think you, you may have all seen, the next day we had the PD there, and they wrote quite a few tickets, but we're going to keep them there for a while, yeah. and we're really going to try to make a dent and make people remember um, going way too fast through there. And that we so. do. And he's right. But we we have a lot of people ask for the speed bumps. But speed bumps on Worst Road you couldn't do because of the main road already through there, and they won't they don't slow down for that either. It didn't seem to me like so. What we're going to have to do is address the police when, on the comments tonight for Adair and and, um, and uh, Worst Road. It's They'd have to look into the part about, I don't think, I wouldn't think Steve Krug and them, I know Richard's here, I don't believe you could do the three-way stop on that road. I don't think so. I, I'm not the road guy Steve is, so we'd have to ask him. Yeah, right now, Mayor, because of the other roadways being shut down, um, we checked to see if we had traffic data from a couple of months ago to compare, uh, just to see if we could tell what the delta in traffic is. But we didn't go back that far before the, the, the road closure, so... Um, we're going to continue monitoring that and um, 
when all the roads are open again, we'll see how that impacts the traffic and the speeds through there also. But some of the things like the crosswalk we want to look at and whether it has flashing lights or not, like we said, if they're not stopping or not yielding to stop signs, it could become an issue with uh, just a regular pedestrian crossing. So we're, we're going to be looking at some of the ones with the flashing lights and, I think we and that need type of both thing. both corners too, Richard, on the other side of Worst Road where you walk across from the other from the south side over to the uh, Adair side. Put them both sides, those crosswalk signs. The blinking signs where you hit the, the button. There's, there's several options and we are evaluating with the PD on what to do in this situation and we are concerned. Um, I mean, the suggestion really is after the North Lakewood detour system is kind of under control and um, a lot of trips are, because of that closure, a lot of trips are going towards Adair and also south of on Adair. So I think if we can kind of do a study, a corridor study after Lakewood is open, that might be helpful to understand what we can do for additional types of safety. But, you know, we are concerned as well. So we are working with PD and we were out there meeting with the folks and you could see it's, it's an issue. We have to do something. Well, I, I understood they were supposed to quit parking on those side. I don't think that they stopped parking on this side. <laughs> no. Here's the thing. They have I, I have to have you come back. Oh, can't, okay. I can't talk from there. But I, I, I know at that corner there is a fire hydrant. And I know that if we do a, like uh, the city manager is saying, we can put a crosswalk there, a pedestrian crosswalk, which will require a sidewalk. If we do all that, they're not going to be able to park there. But okay, I mean, so I that's thought the we said they we weren't supposed to, to park there. Right. Well, I, I'm assuming they, they are parking there. Do so. you want to make a comment real quick? I'm not supposed to do this, but I'm going to bring you back up and let you say it. There is one other thing. I still got one other so comment. It's about the same thing we're talking about. On the weekend, well, of course, the police are short. And somebody has a taco truck they keep putting up at 3 o'clock on Friday. At the church. In, at the church. And they want to put it right in front of the stop sign where they're basically causing more traffic. It's on the stop. Where is it? In front of it's, the stop sign. It's, it's right over across by the from church. the stop. It's in the church parking lot. It's in the church parking lot, but they don't have a stop sign there. Is, is my rumor here, because we just got a new state law, too, about the, the food trucks. <laughs> can, you, can you tell them what the food truck deal is? Because they're all over town. One guy leaves his down here at the corner of Geneva and, uh, Geneva and Bluford, and it's a permanent fixture now. You don't have to buy a building anymore. You just pull the food truck up and park it and right. giddy up and go. Yeah, but in this case, that church is, on, is in un unincorporated Orange County. Yes, it is. So... It's non-residential, so they can park it there. They got to park it legal. There's it, the thing with Worst. It's a little deceiving. There's a lot of right-of-way on Worst Road, and there's, so there's a lot of green space on both sides of the edge of pavement that people assume is their yard, but that is right-of-way. And yeah. um, that road right-of-way is under the city's. So if they're within the pavement and grass, we can move them. If they're on the church property, that's Orange County. Well, that's what I'm trying to say is talking about the food truck there's yeah. there's not really we we can't write them a ticket they were allowed to be on uh, um yeah. non-residential property they're allowed to if park on meet, somebody's house well and now i have their we can regulate on a single family but non-residential they can park well, that's what i'm saying yes. residential yeah. but they're that's what they're doing like i said the one guy on geneva and blueford stays there he just leaves it now and goes on so he don't have to hook it up and take it out so i know that's who come up with State, oh, state representative. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> so, it wasn't us. Uh, we got one more. So, uh, Ashley Wynn. I know we've talked about this. You've got the same things what we've been talking about. So, I'll let you come on up here and say it again. Good evening, Mayor and City Commissioner. So, my name is Ashley Wynn. I am a resident of City of Ecole, along with my two young children. Um, on February 7th, around 5.30, I almost lost one of my children who was trying to cross the street from worse to Adair coming back home. So I, you've heard other residents talk. I'm here today. I want to know what are you going to do to make it safe for not only my children, but other children and pedestrians to cross the street. So I've heard that you said you're going to look at 
possibly adding crosswalks. And I did hear you mentioned sidewalks, which I was also gonna add in because there aren't sidewalks on certain sides of the street or they're so far back. Um, but we really do need crosswalks for our children to get across the street. I would like to see some pedestrian flashing signals. Um, I really would like to see a three-way stop. I understand you have to look into data and all that stuff, but I know that the traffic is bad because of um, some of the detours and stuff going on, but I wanna know what can be done now. Um, my kids have not gone out to ride bikes in the neighborhood since that event. They have not talked about riding bikes, and I don't know when they're gonna want to or if I even can say that it's safe to go out in our own community that we live in. So I, yeah. I'm here asking, what are we gonna do about this? Well, that's why we've been talking about it for trying to figure out what we can do, see what we can do. So you wanna make some more comments? Okay, so, so obviously the approach is to work with PD and the idea is I've already drafted up a safety crosswalk at Adair and Worst Road. We just have to look it over, make sure PD's you know, good with it, and then we can do that in-house, but things like pedestrian push button crosswalks and all that stuff, it gets expensive. And so we would have to come back to you and talk to you about how, how you wanna do that. So. You just need to get us what it is and let us see and what then we're decide going to on, do. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm just saying it, that might be a two-phase project where we can get the crosswalk in and then either at mid-year or when we do the mid-year budget adjustments, then we can budget to have that done. But I think the important thing now is to get the crosswalk and the signs in. Mm -hmm. And if we need to run wiring or solar and um, do some additional sidewalk improvements, that's something that we can consider um, month after next when we do our budget adjustment but we can go ahead and start doing some improvements right now. The other thing is I just want to commit to, um, as long as the detours are in place, um, we're going to still hit that heavily. We're going to run a lot of radar up there, and they're going to continue writing tickets. And I've also asked them to go easy on the warnings and go hard on writing tickets. So that's something that uh, we think will have some effect. That's also, how do they handle that in the mornings and the afternoons for school crossing? Because there are no crews. I know it's a... It's a school crossing. They got to cross that to go to school. Right. I think it's all geared up to go to um, um, Spring Lake, where the crossing is there uh, at the elementary school. I think that's how they geared it up back in 2015 when they did all those improvements with the the, the family dollar store and everything there. And so there are some things that we can do to improve that west of that. But right now we don't have. All right, here's, here's the other problem. We're talking about doing something for this, the mother with her children and these uh, citizens here. We put in for a crosswalk over on Lakewood and that school back in October. It is not up, still isn't up. Hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll have to look into that. So, I mean, if we, if we bring I think, back, Mayor, wasn't that when that was a little more involved? I thought we were going to have the push buttons there. And so that, that never, takes. Nobody's ever said another thing about it. Week school year's about gone. Right. Yeah, I, I thought that's what we were doing there. We'll take a look at that one, too. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that road's probably just as dangerous. We'll have to get back with you on that. I, I, we we want to do everything we can to protect the children. That's, yeah. that's something that's automatic. It's hard to get some of the, this lady said it, the drivers on these streets are not paying attention either, so it's <clears> terrible. <throat> But it's still the life is what means the most to us is make sure we do protect it. So we need to start with what we got to do through the Public Works Department. And maybe you can give her your card sure. and you can let her know what we're in the process of what we're trying to do and keep doing to get that problem solved. Look at, you can look at and with you guys and see if we can do, I don't know if you can do a three-way stop. I honestly, like I said, suggest that we wait till Lakewood's open again and that is not closed. So traffic can move that way and then do a corridor study to see if that's something that we, we need to put in. And do we know how long that track is going to be going more, over there? Two more months. It'll be two more months. And that, yeah, it's not. They're putting a roundabout right there at Fuller's Cross and Lakewood. So once that's done, then they can get back up to Claire Clinton. Let's put a small roundabout at Adair and worse. <laughs> We need a lot Only more money. than just that. <laughs> that whole road is actually dangerous. No, I, there are no right, crosswalks down the whole entire road. Over the, if you're not at the mic, I apologize. That's, we cause this confusion when we're trying to pull the records up later. But I mean, I don't, I, it's, it's a lot safer than the, uh, 
not having, I think it would work with a circle there because it's easier for people and they have to slow down also to can't make it a race track coming down through Worst Road. Yeah, so we'll, he's gonna be, make sure you get all of them's number the three that was here tonight talking mm -hmm. where we can address the issues and keep them informed yeah, and let absolutely. them know what's happened. And thank goodness, I don't know how bad wasn't, you know, not. Thankfully, I mean, he's he's blessed that he's alive because that car was going really fast down the road. Yeah. Um, so he is alive. He does have some injuries, yeah. but nothing right. to keep him in the hospital. Well, he was in the hospital? He did have to go, but nothing to keep yeah. him overnight. Right. Well, we're going to work on it, and if you don't get an answer back from them in a couple of weeks, you call us back and come back up here and tell us again. So we'll make sure our staff's working on it. Absolutely. Right, Richard? Absolutely, yes, sir. All right, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Thank all of you for coming and bringing it up. Thank you. Uh, Scott Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, commissioners. Good to see you again. Um, I had two things I wanted to ask about, and one of them relates to this. Um, I recall in the budget hearing I had asked for, and you had approved two of the radar speed signs on Clarkono Coe, and I was going to ask about the status of those. And if my memory is right, there was also one that was going to go on Worst Road, and I was wondering if that was in place and if not certainly that would the research that i did that i brought and worked with the chief on showed that those are the only thing that works um, just knocking the top off excessive speeding um, from you know over 11 miles an hour over the speed limit to under eight miles an hour under the speed limit is the single factor in preventing fatalities and accidents. You can't prevent the accidents, but you can prevent the really bad ones. And um, so that on the worst road and the two on Clarkona and Coe, I wanted to ask about. And I have another one. I want call. you to give him your, I want Richard to give you his phone number too. And you, he can call you and address, address you can stay up, you can address Mr. Kennedy's questions about those signs also. Um, the speed detection systems on Clarkona Cohen? Yes. Well, we have ordered them, but I, they haven't come in yet. I mean, those are, those are items that we, we, we know the location, but we, we haven't received them. What about the, you have one on Worst Road as well that was uh, in the budget hearing. Is that in place? Uh, I'd have to get with PD and ask them. Okay. That's what I say. Give him your number. Yeah. Please call him. Okay. We'll let him finish then, Richard. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, no problem. Thank you very much. Um, the second thing I wanted to ask about or uh, follow up on was uh, two meetings ago, uh, Mr. Mayor, you had asked a question about the political signs. And of course, I pass them every day on Clark <coughs> and Coe and Clark. And um, I had written a note. Um, I did some research with the department, uh, I'm sorry, the supervisor of elections and on the city ordinance. And it appears that our Sydney ordinance dictates when signs must be removed after an election, but there is no limit on how soon or early prior to election they can go in place. I was told that um, the city ordinances reign supreme on those. Uh, and so you all are at liberty to do what you want. Um, I wanted to ask you to uh, put that on your agenda, maybe for next meeting or soon after, and maybe look at modifying that ordinance if you would. I, I brought that up earlier with the gentleman, citizen, Mr. Mellon, out in the audience. I think there's got to be some way we can go ahead and work on changing the sign time because a year and a half ahead of elections is kind of much. I uh, had an owner of some property on the corner of uh, Geneva and uh, Semi, he called me the other day about some stuff, and he's got people keep putting those big signs up on his property, and he says there's two more there now, and he said he told them not to put on the property. The one that had already been there, and he had it removed. So I went by there today, and there's two, the same thing, or back yeah. up there. Said they don't get permission. So the problem is we've got to come up with a way of, and I'm not, he said, well, y'all take them down. I said, oh, no, no, I ain't doing that. So we've got to figure out a way, and I think we need to come up with maybe the, 
lawyer day has come up with a way we can write the ordinance to change those times. You don't need more than the max 60 days. You said 45. In 45, you don't need a year. And the problem we got is if we let, we rule the rule as city elections, but the county with the county elections and the state elections, they stick them everywhere. And a lot of them stay there. Well, uh, if I may, uh, I spoke to the supervisor election. He said even for those races inside the city limits, your ordinance will be respected. Good. That's good to know. You can modify yeah. that. During my, during my time to comment, this was on my notes here. Okay. Were you, were you reading them? <laughs> um, and that's what I've been getting a lot of complaints also from our residents. Okay, yep. they see them. It's getting them quite annoyed. Okay. And what I was going to ask by consensus of the city commission, our ordinance does not mimic the county ordinance. The county ordinance says 90 days. And we, I would like to know by consensus if we could do that, mimic their ordinance that you can't go 90 days before an election and change our ordinance and brought back to the next um, meeting. Sorry. That was, that was again, I, I think if we could what, do that. Yeah, I think he's, I was just talking to city attorney, I think his Next week is the, uh, the day for the lawyer to be here. We can draft an ordinance that comes up with a time frame for these signs. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Thanks for reading my mind they're, here. I mean, they're not, they're not going away. They, and it's not really people from our town. It's people from everywhere else mm -hmm. that's taking them up. And I will, uh, there, here's another problem. If they have to put it in the corner of uh, Adair and worse, it's going to really be bad. They put those four by eight signs up on the corners where you come up to, especially at Clear Corner and uh, Clark Road, they got two, three big ones on the corner and, and it's a hard to get out and see what's coming. And yeah. there's some wrecks happening in that place. So I'm assuming that's a consensus, Mayor, yeah. to bring that back. And because of the advertising requirements, um, we probably wouldn't be able to bring that back to the second meeting in March, but that well, meeting has been canceled. Well, so it is possible this could wait, have to wait until April 1st, the first meeting in April. I'm, how about you, Commissioner Brinson? What is the consensus for? To bring the ordinance bring before, to, to agendize it and bring time. it forth. Okay, because I, I would need more information regarding what the city is doing, what the, what the requirements for the state, because political signs are protected. And so. Not, not for a year. But the county, the county has an ordinance, and their ordinance, right. from what I understand, it says 90, they can't go between right. 90 days more. Right, I but I don't have that ordinance in front of me. Right, but I would like, well, that's where our That's why we're is. asking to get right. work on it and bring it back. Okay. The consensus that they, if the county, if we confirm the county has an ordinance for 90 days prior to an election, that we mimic that in ours. Okay. And that's what I'm asking for the consensus for our attorney to do that and to bring it back before us so that we don't become... Um, every corner have signs plastered for a year. Right. That's the last thing our residents want, at least my residents. Yeah, I'll agree, I'll consent to the attorney drafting something to bring before us. But I'm not consenting to the 90 days, I'm just consenting to whatever he's gonna bring before us for. for well, the, the, whatever we come up with, we'll have, you'll have to vote on it. We'll have to vote on it. We need the citizens to show up. It, it's a problem because you go to all in there. We got some major intersections in our city, and I do believe there's one up on the corner where you turned. There was one on the corner where you turned to your house. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, no, uh, yeah. Mr. Brent, no, there's Commissioner a couple Brent. of them up there. But they just seem to. The gentleman told me the other day, he said, I don't know who. He said, I told him not to put them up, but the next thing I know, they're up. So I got to take them down. So we'll, we'll bring that to us, work on that order, and bring it back to us the first meeting in yep. April. And we're not meeting the second meeting in March, so that's what we're talking about. All right, that's it on the, anybody else in the public have any comments? All right, don't forget to fill out a form. Hi, uh, Jason Mellon, I live at 2137 New Victor Road. Um, I was really gonna say what Scott said. Um, these signs are an eyesore to the community. Um, a lot of cities have 45 days um, before and five days after. And no, political signs are not protected. They're already relegated by state, county, and city, as well as um, where the county already has ordinances that they cannot be on county roads um, within the right-of-way or in the, the median. So there's already one that I mentioned to the mayor earlier that's not in a COE, but it's an illegal sign at 80 Mims and Apopka Vinland Road. It's the same candidates year after year that 
do this. And it's, it's getting really old, and it's an eyesore to the community. Um, I also noticed the signs are supposed to have who sponsored or who paid for the signs visibly seen. None of the signs have any of the information that shows who paid for these signs. And that right there is already, I believe, um, a campaign violation. So, but thank you. I'd love for y'all to do something about these eyesore signs that are everywhere. On top of that, um, the trash signs, you know, your tax signs that are everywhere. I don't know what our, we already have an ordinance for that, right? Yeah. Um, is there any way we can do something or, or get some of these signs? Talk about snipe signs. I'm, I'm talking about like you know your tax signs, your yeah, daycare, get eight thousand. They're hot on them right now. <laughs> City manager comes in in the mornings and stops and picks them up. I, I pick, pick up everyone I see. Yeah, and, and they're t notorious. The county, <laughs> county don't seem to bother with them. So no, they, I, I know um, we, Commissioner Moore our, does, and I have our, our people have been notified when they see one, they need to stop and pick it up. Yeah, yeah, I know Mayor. my district, um, District Four, is just rife with yeah. them. They're everywhere. Yeah, one of the things I did sad. recently in, in talking with the chief, the patrol officers are out there yeah. picking the ones up they see. Um, that aren't designated for a city-sponsored sporting event or a sporting club or something like that. So I've noticed in the last couple of weeks after I've spoken with the chief, uh, I, I find them hard to find now because usually I grab a few just about every morning, especially on Monday mornings. Right. But uh, they're doing a good job. PD's pick, the PD's picking them up is uh, probably they within hours. Is there a fine in I'll the ordinance? Pretty quick. Well, you can't find out. Half the time, um, they know the city phone numbers, so when we call the number on it, they don't answer or it goes to voicemail, so I'm trying to trace them back. And a lot of times, there are businesses outside of the city, so we don't really have a mechanism because it would be a city code violation. So they, they know all the tricks. So we just pick them up and uh, pick up their $4 sign and throw it away within an hour after they put it down. That's our best uh, way to deal with those. They're more than $4 now. Yeah, you guys probably know better. Right. It's pretty expensive. Yeah. All right, well, I appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. they don't last I, I will. I will say real quick, and I know Commissioner Wilson's been here a long time. She does the sign some of them, not as much as that probably what you run citywide. I, I put a lot of signs out, but I haven't ever. There's a, I think ours is 24 hours. I think ours is 24. To pick them up? It's five days or a week to pick them up. Next day, I pick mine up the next day. Yeah, it's five days or a week. I can't that remember. Night, when I get through the election, I, uh, we go out and start picking them up. A lot of people take them up because they like the wood. So that, that also takes care of some of them. But there's no sense in having them out for a year and a half in an election before, before time. It just doesn't make the area look good. All right. All of, that's all of our comments from the citizens. So we'll go to the... Uh, Rob, you have anything else you want us? No, I'm, I'm good, Mayor. Thanks. Huh? So we'll go to the uh, city commissioners, uh, Commissioner Firstner. Um, I know Commissioner Oliver has brought this up numerous times, and I want to bring it up one more time. The uh, Citizens Advisory Commission, or Council for the Okoy Fire Department, it's uh, really suffering in its membership. We need to increase the members on not only that, but on all of our volunteer boards. Um, I know this one, it struggles to make a, uh, their meetings for uh, lack of a quorum. And uh, they go for some time without having a, a meeting. It used to be a very vibrant and active committee. And it seems to have faltered in you know, the past uh, year. And a lot of that is due to the COVID restrictions that have been put on them. But uh, if you have any interest in joining the, the commission or the council and learning more about our fire department and how it interacts with the community, we sure would like you to uh, join this uh, committee and uh, participate in it. You can pick up a, an application at the city clerk's office or you can contact me and I can uh, make sure that you get one. Um, I attended the uh, police department award ceremony, I guess it was last month, and it was fantastic. But I noticed that we didn't have any kind of television coverage of that activity. Is that due to, that hasn't been funded in the budget? It, it's not been funded, but I don't know if the request has come in during the budget time from the police department. Um, 
and typically off-site, we might have someone doing a video of it. I don't know if they had anyone do a video that night, but um, we typically don't do our video like we do in the commission chambers at an off-site venue. But I wouldn't doubt if they do have some video, maybe not the entire uh, award ceremony. Yeah, I would like to see that uh, on, our, on our city television network. And everything. It, it's excellent advertisement for the city. Yes. It shows what a good department the police is, and if other departments have activities like that, award ceremonies or special activities, if we could get video of that and run it on the uh, city channel, it would be a big boost for morale for those departments, and it would really show the city in its best light. I should. Um, I, I have been asked about uh, the widening of McGuire Road and Blueford Avenue between Geneva and 50, that general area. And the answer is, is yes, we have plans for both of those roadways to be widened and sidewalks added to it. But the problem with that is, is that we're facing uh, a few challenges on both of those roads. They're both in the planning stages right now, but uh, it's definitely coming. I can't tell you when, so if the stars are all aligned and everything goes well, hopefully it'll be sooner than later. And I do have a question for Richard in Public Works. Down on McGuire, Richard, uh, between Windsor Landing and Meadow Ridge, I had asked a couple months back if Public Works would clear that sidewalk area of the bushes, they were all overhanging and everything. And you did do that and did a fantastic <coughs> job. The only problem with it was that it exposed the split rail fence that was right on the other side. Yeah. Are we responsible for that? Yes. Okay, is there any plans on replacing it? Uh, we have looked at it, it's another expensive item, but we understand we need to do something there. Okay. Most of it's rotted and it's not in good shape. In that yeah, it's falling apart. Maybe yeah. we can put that in next year's budget. Absolutely, sir. It, it's not a, a critical necessity that it has to be done right away right. because there's no foot traffic or anything that goes past that. You know, it's all heavily wooded. Right. So if you'll pass that on to uh, Mr. Krug, maybe you can work it up in uh, this next year's coming budget. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Brinson. Oh, he tricked me. <laughs> no, no, not, not at all. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to reiterate some of the things that have been discussed already tonight, uh, mainly uh, driving. We've discussed driving ad nauseum here, <laughs> trying to get people to slow down. Uh, now we've had a, a near... Uh, tragic accident. Fortunately, it didn't come to that. Uh, but when, I, when we talk about safety, uh, I talk about different categories of safety. Uh, pedestrian safety, is obviously, is one of them. Bicycle safety is another. Uh, but then you get into the other two, which is elder safety and child safety. And if you don't, if the first two are not that big on your list of things to do, at hopefully child safety and elder safety are because children will do things that they probably shouldn't do like running the road after a ball uh, different crazy things they do playing the streets and stuff like that so at drivers we have to be mindful as far as elder safety as we get older we don't we don't move as fast as we used to so we have to be mindful of that as well and then of course here in the city of Okoe we have communities and neighborhoods that do not have sidewalks. So oftentimes you will find the residents walking along the right of way. Uh, and so you have to be even more cautious in driving. This, it pains me to have to sit here, literally meeting after meeting, month after month, saying the same thing. Please slow down, be careful, be patient, no road rage. But here we are, and I think I've mentioned this before, is that we don't want to have to be up here talking about someone getting hit by a car 
for whatever reason, regardless of who, who was at fault, we don't want that. But speed kills. And so we have to be mindful of that. Uh, I'm not of the mind that uh, citing our way uh, out of this problem is the best answer. I think it's a, it's a Band-Aid because soon as the enforcement leaves, the speed comes back up. So I, I beg this, the, the drivers, uh, especially as uh, was mentioned here today, <clears throat> a lot of these roads that there's, that's some of the main problem areas are the roads that the locals travel on. So this is not someone outside the city coming in. This is us doing it to ourselves. So we have to be mindful of that. Uh, but enforcement is important. I think we should have more enforcement. I think we also should have uh, people police their own ranks, as I used to say. If, you, if, you, if your neighbor is a speeder, call them out on it. Let them know, hey, listen, you need to drive like your children uh, live here or play here. Or as your, your mother or father or grandparent is walking these roads. It's important that we, we make sure that we take care of ourselves. Again, I've, I've talked about safety, I don't know how many times here, and here we, we are talking about it again because of, of, of something that could have been a horrible, horrible accident in our community. So that's, that's important. I, I, I'll use a, a phrase I say, I've said many times, that horse will never be too dead to beat. We've got to keep talking about driver safety. We've got to be, keep talking about elder safety child safety, pedestrian safety, bicycle safety. It is so very important. I can go on and on and on and say it over and over and over, but the reality is, is that we have to slow down. Uh, worst road, and I'm gonna harp on worst, worst road is, it's a 25 mile an hour road. We can't lower the speed limit anymore on worst road. We can't. And yet we still, that's one of the problem areas. And that's, that's not someone else, that's us doing it to ourselves. So we have to, we have to be mindful of that. Um, the last thing is uh, there, there are some, some uh, other communities, other intersections, uh, also on Worst Road, that residents have called me about. Uh, a three-way stop at Worst and Adair. Uh, we've been talking about this traffic problem on Worst Road long before the, the development on Lakewood. This is not a new problem. This is not something that there's more traffic coming down Adair turning onto worse. This is a matter of people on worse road are driving too fast. That's what this is. And if there's more traffic on worse road, that just compounds the problem. But the problem existed, pre-existed the, con the construction and development uh, on the north end. So we have to be mindful of, of that as well. Uh, and I'll piggyback off of what Commissioner Firstner just read uh, or, or said, stated about getting involved with, with uh, uh, advisory boards. It's important that the, the residents get involved with these advisory boards. Have an input of what's happening within our city. Be, be bold enough to come out and, and state your case by way of advisory boards. Then you will have a say in what happens here. It is, it is so vitally important to be engaged. And, you know, I, I, have, uh, I have a family member who has never, ever, ever voted, over 80 years old, has never voted. He knows he can talk to me, he can never talk to me about politics. He can never do it. I always shut him down. For the last 40 years, I've been shutting him down. You can't talk to me about, if you won't get engaged on that level, you can't talk to me about politics. It's kind of the same way. If you're not engaged with what's going on in the city, you can't really say, hey, you know what, I, I think you should do it this way. Because if you're not telling me which way I should do it, then I think the way that I'm doing it is okay. Engage us. Let us know that what we're doing <clears throat> is what you would like to see. We can do better. Uh, tell us what, 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 what we're doing right, and tell us the others as well. But if you're not telling us you know, what, you know, what we're doing, we may consider that to be okay. And I don't think that's the case. So again, please slow down. Please, I beg of you, slow down. Be mindful of our children, our pedestrians. Be mindful of our elderly uh, and our, our bicyclists. 
and of course, those drivers who drive the speed limit. Be, be mindful of drivers who drive the speed limit. Don't tailgate them and blow at them. That's all I have. Thank you. Commissioner for, uh, Wilson. Thank you. <laughs> sorry. For a moment there, I was like, yeah, I wasn't sure my name. That's okay. Um, I'm sorry for the trauma that your son is suffering. That's something we don't want our children to have to experience. No one wants that. And worst road, 25 miles an hour, Orlando Avenue, 30 miles an hour. I quite enjoy when I have a train behind me because I'm the one going 30, trying to, and I've got six, seven cars behind me who are just waiting for me to turn into my neighborhood. Um, we've talked about speed so many times. It's, it's an issue that, the only thing I guess is giving tickets because um, I guess the only way you can affect someone is in their pocketbook. So I'm sorry, you know, again, we don't want anything to happen. We want people to be able to go crosswalk and cross. I can tell you on Orlando Avenue, coming off of Montgomery, they're more interested in looking to their left than looking to the right to see me standing there. And they're, you know that, Brad, they're just turning and they're not watching. And the sad thing is we have people that are not mindful. We are given $10,000 in the budget, each commissioner every year, well, the last two years, to spend how we felt appropriate. Last year, I bought two speed signs that flash when you are going over the speed limit on the street. I've got a third one, I think, that's on order. And I don't know if it helps. It makes, it makes me aware when I'm driving down Orlando Avenue when the thing starts flashing and I'm going 35 and it's telling me that I'm going over the speed limit. Again, what does it take to make someone realize that they're speeding? I don't know, but I will continue to spend that money if, again, if I think it's going to help us. So again, we want our children, doesn't matter what age, elderly, hey, I'm slower. I don't think I should call myself elderly. But um, elderly or children, we want people to stop at the stop at the crosswalks. However long it takes for someone to get across, let them go. Please, obey the speed limit. We don't want your $400, but we'll take it. If that's what you want to do is not to obey the law. And you're right, when we go into Windermere, I've never gotten a ticket, but I'll tell you, I go 25. Because the story you hear it. You, you, they're going to get you. So please, that's a concern to us. Um, I'm going to kind of switch things. Yes, about the signs, the, po the political signs. I would have no one that would like me if I put signs in their yard for a year and a half. <laughs> I don't think anyone would want my sign in their yard for a year and a half. So I don't think our residents should have to look at those signs as they make, as they hopefully stop and look both ways and see the sign there. They don't need to see that. Um, one more thing I'm going to say is um, kind of many different topics here. We have, I don't know, if, um, Mayor, if you're going to mention music in the park this coming up. You can. Have, okay. You can. Um, there's music in the park, and we've been having it for about the last three or four months. It's been kind of strange. It's cold. It's rainy. Um, I've been there for all of them. And we hear this that in what was happening in our, I love to call it, our sister city how they're doing this and they're having music and they're having things in the park. We're having something in the park. Why aren't you attending? Yes, it's been cold. I've gone down with a blanket. We've had dinner there. There's food trucks if you want to eat. Or I've, we stopped and picked up something. And we sat there and ate and enjoyed the music. And there might have been, I don't know, 30, 40 people there, would you say, maybe? Yeah, 30. About 30 people. I want to see that park filled. You can't tell me what's happening in the next city. Come to your own city. Maybe they want to come over and, to us, but that's great. But we should be attending the, uh, the areas that we find as the departments find that you want and music in the park. You want to come into the park, you want to have dinner, you want to sit there and enjoy it. It's a great family night. People were on blankets, people brought their chairs. I suggest blanket, but it's cold. It was raining one night. In between, I was sitting there enjoying it, so please, Attend this, it's a great event. Let's see more of you out there. Don't go to the next city all the time. Stay here, enjoy it. Enjoy what we have, the opportunities that we have here. It's your tax dollars that are paying for this. Come enjoy them. I think that's all that I have to say, Mayor, thank you. I think that's most you've said. I have it, it was, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Just, just a couple of comments real quick, again about the uh, the speeder and worst road and they there. Everybody needs to understand that children are our most 
one of our, especially to your own, is this most important thing in our lives, which now turn into be grandkids to go along with it, maybe a little more. But I will tell you, 45 years ago, going down Ruiz Avenue, my son, who was going to Okoy Middle School, got run over. Got hit on a bicycle and knocked slap three, it was a hundred and something feet knocked off that bicycle. Now he was also, thank God, nothing seriously wrong with him except sore bone. He was an athlete. He rolled when he got hit. He rolled where he wouldn't. So it happens now, it happened then. But a lot of it's got to do with nobody paying attention. And I tell my kids, I tell my grandkids, I tell my wife, when you're out on the road, watch the other people. Watch the other cars, because they're the ones that's going to cause it. Most times, they're going to cause that accident. So we're going to try to follow through on that road up there. I promise you, make sure those things are added to those roads that will take care of that. And the other thing about what I brought up about Lakewood, no, it might not have caused that to happen, but it is a problem having that people come up on that road, because it is jam-packed with cars mm -hmm. coming up that road, and they're not paying attention to driving. They're in a hurry to get back over to a clear corner road where they can go the other way. So that was why I brought that up, because it is a mess. And I don't want to hear from two months from now, oh, we got to change this. It's got to go two foot deeper, and we're going to go another three months. So we don't want to see that or hear that. <laughs> so the other thing is, is um, the other night I, I got a message, and I forgot to say it last meeting, but our firefighter, I don't know how many of you know, but Butch Cascianano, who was a firefighter with our city, he started, he was the first, he was a volunteer firefighter, but he was the very first paid firefighter in the city 50 years ago. He died the week before last. He was, in our, he retired as a captain in our fire department. He was one of the nicest men you'd ever want to meet. As a matter of fact, him and I went to school from the fifth grade till we graduated together. But Butch, Rupert Ward, Butch Cushionetta, Rupert Ward, Rex Ward, and Jamie, Jimmy Vandergriff, who was the chief, those were the first four paid firefighters in our city. Did you know that? Yeah. They were the fourth four paid firefighters. That was 50 years ago. So I, I, I should have said that before, but he, they were the, Butch was a true Okoy young man. All right, the other thing is school boards, I, I had a developer, and I don't know, called me the other day about wanting to do some development up here on Silver Star Road, about putting in some townhomes. And the first thing he got stopped on, and I talked to Mike Rumor about it, but I still want to bring it up. He got told that you, you, your school board, the school allocation, you can't meet, we can't meet the school allocation. Well, here's the thing. I got a letter from the school board. Uh, what's her name, Freeman? Uh, what's the chairman? Teresa oh, Jacobs. Teresa. 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 I got a letter, and all did too, saying that we're understaffed and that we're under, under the count of pupils in our students in our schools, that we got too many kids going to private schools and and church schools, so they don't have enough. But then again, when it comes time to send them to three million dollars for that new apartments going up on Lakewood, they take that. They take the other money from all them houses that are going up on Arden Park and all those other places on Clark Road. And they're taking that money and putting it in the coffers, but they won't let us have a new middle school. We have one middle school in this city. Well, they will, and I got that letter, and I'm gonna have him take it where he can go to, when he goes to address it at the school board where she states to me that our city lets too many kids go to private schools or church schools. Well, that's the parents' business, not ours. And they're supposed to get the same amount of money or a portion of it, not maybe the same amount. So that's, if you're sending me a letter saying there's not enough room, we have plenty of room, we don't have enough pupils, then you can tell these people, developers, they can't build. So that's, that's a problem. But they still take all that money we send them for the taxes that you pay, and you're still paying every year after that back towards that, which means a lot to me because I got to still pay them taxes, and I'm 76 years old, so he gets they don't they don't ever let up. But the other thing is I got a couple more here, folks. Uh, I, my, I was I was talking to Rob, Rob and I maybe six months ago or eight months ago about the park we're building over here. Uh, it's going to be the uh, park where the water park is, and it'll be an exercise park, I guess, walking around and that. I would like us to name that the Unification Park. Now, I'd like us to discuss it sometimes. Call it. I get every speech I hear, everything that we get blamed for on the news, is we don't have unity in this city. 
I would love to name that the Unification Park and make that park where we put that, and you can call it the Freedom Trail walking it in there if you want to. But that's the time to make it where we, that park can be where we make the unity happen in this city. We put it in that park over there, and it's going to be a beautiful place right across the street on the other side. It's, I think it's about $4 million, Rob, in that, in that. When it's Freedom. finished, uh, uh, we, we think that's the number when it's finished, Mayor, yeah. not, not initially. So I want to see if we can name that thing the Unification Park and uh, make it something that we can uh, say that this is part of the stuff we're doing in this city, that making ourselves, and we get keep getting hit with it, we don't, but it is. And I hear unity all the time from people, but they don't seem to understand unity means everybody. And talking about the, uh, the, the boards, we do need to add more people on the boards, because our diversity boards, which these gentlemen join, is not really diverse. We need to make it a diverse board. We need to add more different people. We have, we have, no, we have no Spanish. We have no Indian. We have no Asian. We need to make that board where it is truly a diverse board that serves all the people in the diversity in this city. All right. Well. Mayor, did you mention about Danny Hall? Oh, Danny Hall. Thank well, you. I went to his funeral. We had four people die. I didn't name all of them. But Danny Howe, I'm sorry about that, Commissioner Wilson. You're right. Danny, Danny Howe was District 1 Commissioner. Passed away a couple weeks ago also. He was our City Commissioner for District 1 up off the hill there. He, yeah, he did a good job. He was there. He was uh, got sick, and I think he, he passed away at the hospital a couple weeks ago. So I went to the funeral about a week ago. So just everybody keep them in your thoughts and prayers. Like I said, they... Danny was here all his life. His brother worked for us here too, so a lot of a lot of things happening. One, you know, so we just keep our thoughts and prayers for the people and, and protect yourself with the COVID. Does anybody else have any other comments? One more comment, and I'm not. No street lights on Highway 50 yet. It's been over a year. No street lights, and it is dark on Highway 50. So we still ain't got no lights up for Duke. So if somebody needs to pull the plug with them, as they say. Huh? All right. All right. So I appreciate it. Thank you for coming tonight. We'll be back first meeting in March, and after that, we'll be off the second meeting.